the impact of the spread of age in the early 2000s was, the only word is devastating. If you look at the poorest communities in Africa, it was literally ripping the heart out of some of these communities. That middle generation of moms and dads and workers and aunts and uncles, leaving some communities with just children and grandparents. It had impacts on economic output. It had impacts on stability in these countries. It had impact on the faith community who spent all of its time putting people in the ground with funerals. It was just an indescribable crisis and one without hope at the time. Before the introduction of PEPFAR and the advent of these life-saving medicines, antiretrovirals, if you caught HIV AIDS, it was a death sentence. So it really was uh, hard to describe how difficult it was on those communities and how hopeless it seemed at the time. Well, America responded first tentatively and then heroically. Our strategy before PEPFAR was really to focus on AIDS prevention. So if you had it, unfortunately, that was it. There was very little that could be done. Our response uh, was to really focus on the three basics, which was prevention, care for those impacted, but very, very importantly, treatment. That was the new and revolutionary uh, element of what the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief did. And it was, it was sort of a, a tectonic shift in our approach to tackling the disease overseas. Turns out not only was treatment very important in terms of helping those who already had it, it was a very important measure for preventing the spread. Faith leaders were in heroic, uh, overcoming bias and stigma and, and lack of knowledge about the disease to help those who were suffering. So a tremendous amount of work went through working with uh, communities of faith to educate about the disease, to destigmatize the disease, and to help get people the treatment that they needed in order to save their own lives and, help, and prevent it from being spread to others. PEPFAR alone has uh, credit saving about 17 million people. Communities really have come back from, you know, from the dead. In fact, there's a wonderful biblical term that people talk about this, which is the Lazarus effect. It is both communities coming back to life, but watching people go from this emaciated, very, very sick uh, impact of the disease to a robust life again. And so people are able to live fulsome lives with the disease now with these incredible medicines that uh, the United States has helped provide. We go back 10, 15 years later and these hospital, these HIV wards are empty. Uh, or they're seeing people who are receiving their monthly treatment, uh, their allotment of treatment. We have made such incredible progress against the disease. It's important to maintain that momentum until we defeat it. When we started, about 5,000 people were dying every day from HIV, which is just a mind-boggling number, 5,000 every day. That number's been cut in half, which is both a remarkable testament to the success, the technology, the goodwill of the people who've made that happen. It's also 2,500 people dying every day from a preventable, treatable disease. If 2,500 people were dying every day in an attack or in a plane crash, it would be front page news. So we can't, despite the fact that we've made incredible progress, get complacent about the job that's left to do. Defeating HIV AIDS is a marathon, and the second half of the marathon is always tougher. So we've got to keep focus, we've got to keep the resources, we've got to make sure that politicians hear from their public and their voters that this is important to defeat the job.